I've got a nice viewer suggested problem for you guys today. And I like this problem for a couple of different reasons. First, it requires a nice mixture of linear algebra and number theory. So we can see linear algebra in the statement, and then we'll see the number theory come out in the solution. And then furthermore, this was suggested by the great good place to stop. So I'd like to thank this person for a bunch of nice suggested problems that I was recently sent. Okay, let's look at the statement. So the question is, is there an odd integer n, and that's a positive integer, such that we have n by n matrices with integer entries, a and b, satisfying two conditions. First, those matrices commute. So we've got AB equals BA. And second, we've got this polynomial type relationship with these matrices. So A to the fourth plus 4A squared B squared plus 16B to the fourth is equal to 2019 times the identity. So let's look at a couple of hints built into the statement of this problem. First is that we're looking for odd integers in. Since we're looking for odd integers in and n equals 1 is odd, that tells us that the n equals 1 case will probably be a nice warm-up, which should give us a hint towards the general solution. The next hint built into this is that a, b equals b, a. In other words, we have commutativity among these matrices. That's a pretty special fact about these matrices, and it will allow us to factor the left-hand side of this polynomial equation nicely. Whereas, if we didn't have commutativity, that would be hard to factor or maybe not even helpful to factor. Okay, so like I said, the n equals 1 case will be helpful, so we'll look at that first. That'll be like our warm-up. So let's say we set n equal to 1 and then look at this condition down here. So in other words, we want to suppose that we have 1 by 1 matrices, in other words, numbers a and b satisfying this. So that's going to be a to the fourth plus 4a squared b squared plus 16b to the fourth equals 2019 times the one by one identity matrix, but that's just the number. So let's reiterate the fact that here a and b are just integers, so they're just numbers. But now there's a nice factorization of this quartic, which is on the left hand side. This isn't super well known if you're just taking a course in algebra, but it is very well known if you're studying for math contests in algebra. So this guy over here factors into the following quadratics. So we've got a squared plus 2ab plus 4b squared, and then a squared minus 2ab plus 4b squared, and then we have this is equal to 2019. Now maybe the most obvious thing to do at this stage would be to factor 2019 into primes, and then try to match this quadratic and this quadratic with some combination of that prime factorization solve for a and b. And if you're interested, maybe I say you should do that, but it's not super helpful in this case for a couple of different reasons. One, there's an easier way to do it, and two, that would be very hard to generalize to these n by n matrices. So instead what we'll do is notice that positive 2 and negative 2 are congruent modulo 4. But if they're congruent modulo 4, that means that these two objects are equal mod 4. But that means that we've got really a perfect square mod 4 on the left-hand side. Then we just have to check if it's possible for the right-hand side to be a perfect square modulo 4. So, in other words, let's reduce this mod 4. In other words, we're looking inside of Z4. And so this comes from like an undergraduate math contest. So it's likely that the competitors would know about the group Z4. So let's see. In Z4, this turns into a squared plus 2ab times a squared plus 2ab equals 
three. So you can check that that's three more than 2016, and 2016 is a multiple of four. So like I said, in Z4, these two are the obvious reductions of the left-hand side and the right-hand side. If you wanna write this as congruent mod four, you would just have another line here and then a mod four. But now notice that these two are the same, which means we have a squared plus 2ab squared is equal to three. And like I said, this is in Z4. Now, if we make a table of the perfect squares in Z4, we'll notice that three is never a perfect square. We can do that really quickly. Let's say we've got k here and k squared here, zero, one, two, three. Those are all of the elements in Z4. Zero squared is zero, one squared is one, two squared is four, which is zero, three squared is nine, but nine is equal to one. Notice that we never get three here. So that means that there is no solution for this n equals one case. That actually gives us a guess that there probably shouldn't be a solution for the higher n cases. So let's maybe get rid of this, and that's exactly what we'll show. So we just got done showing that there is no solution to this setup for n equals 1. Now we'll show the same thing for n bigger than 1. So I'm going to try to do this in a pretty elegant way. So this would maybe be a final draft. So instead of talking about reducing mod 4 and so on and so forth, I'm going to say that we're going to work inside of mnz4. In other words, the ring of n by n matrices with integers in Z4. Okay, so let's suppose that the two matrices A and B in M, N, Z satisfy, I'll just put two stars over here to mean these two blue dots. But if they satisfy those two stars in the integers, then that means they also satisfy these two conditions in MNZ4. In other words, the ring of n by n matrices with integers in Z4. And then furthermore, let's maybe go ahead and write n as 2m plus 1. We know that we can do that because n is odd. That's one of our assumptions. Okay, so now let's write down our equation. So we've got a to the fourth plus 4a squared b squared plus 16b to the fourth equals 2019i. So that's the equation in MNZ, but now in MNZ4, we can make the following simplifications. So notice this guy is going to become zero because we've got a multiple of four here. This guy is going to become zero because 16 is a multiple of four. So we have a to the fourth is equal to 2019 times the identity matrix. But in Z4, that's equal to three times the identity matrix. Now, next up, what I want to do is take the determinant of both sides. So this is a step which was not present inside of our warm-up, which inspired this solution. Although, notice we've already like cut out one of the steps from our warm-up just by reducing in Z4 more quickly. So why didn't we have to take the determinant there? Well, that's because n was equal to one and the determinant is just equal to the matrix. Okay, so just to reiterate here, we're gonna take the determinant and then we'll get the determinant of A all to the fourth power, just by the multiplicative rule of the determinant. And then over here, we'll have the determinant of three times the n by n identity matrix, but that's just three to the n, but that's three to the two m plus one, given the fact that n is equal to two m plus one. But now that's equal to three squared to the m times three, but three squared, like we saw before, is equal to nine, but that's equal to one inside of Z4. So this is just equal to three. But now we can make essentially the same argument that we made on the last board. We can see that this is a perfect fourth power, which itself is a perfect square. Notice we have the determinant of A squared squared equals three, but three is not a square 
in Z4. And so we've arrived at our contradiction. So let's see, we started up here supposing that we had a solution. That gave us some sort of contradiction, so that means we have no solution. So not only is there no solution for n equals 1, there is no solution for all odd n. And that's a good place to stop.